So God's word becomes like light in our lives. And we ought to take heed to God's word. I would like by the grace of God to deal with a matter which I feel is important in every Christian's life and in the life of the church as a whole. In Habakkuk chapter number three, I want us to begin there. There is a prayer that prophet Habakkuk made in chapter number three of the book of Habakkuk. A prayer by Habakkuk the prophet upon Shingenoth. O Lord, I have heard thy speech and was afraid. O Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the days. In the midst of the years, make known in wrath, remember mercy. When Habakkuk thought about God and the word of God and the works of God, he said, I stand in awe of your works. Lord, why don't you come and help us? Why don't you help us again? We all, majority of us, have experienced at least in the past in our lives the touch of God the help of God some of us can say that they have been born again that they have been turned from sin to a righteous living but as time goes on sometimes after you have been saved for five years Seven years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. Sometimes a cloud comes over us. And we start feeling like it probably was not worth it all. And like Habakkuk, we need to have a quest, a quest. For revival. We need to have a desire. For renewing of our lives. And minds and spirits. So that we may serve God again. With zeal. And determination. As it was in the beginning. One of the churches in uh, Revelation. Their crime was that they had lost their first love. They had fallen from up there to down here. And some of us can remember a time when we had a quickness. We had a desire when we were going to sleep on Saturday we had a great desire to wake up in the morning on Sunday and rush I say rush to the house of God but some of us Sunday has literally become a day of slow moving some of us will appear in the house of God just because what will people think if I don't appear? Not what will God think, but what will people think? And even when it comes to times of worship, you remember a time when you got into the house of God and when singing began, you lifted up your eyes and surrendered to God. Gave yourself your whole self to God. And it didn't matter who came in, who went out. It didn't matter who sat down in the midst of the praise and worship. You were deep down there concentrating on God. Pouring your heart to God. 
We sure need revival today. We sure need revival. Even in the way we support and stand with God's work. There are some of us who would never spend our salary before having given something to the work of God. We need revival, I say. Revival is needed especially in times of great law, laws, spiritual law. We were there, but now we are down here. We need revival. Praise the name of the Lord our God. What is revival? To some, to some people, revival is excessive emotions and excitement. To others, revival is a great evangelistic meeting. But revival. While it may include some of those things I have stated here before, it's much more than that. And I want to say in the beginning of this message that revival is within the will of God. God wants us to have revival. God wants us to have a new zeal for him. Revival is divine intervention in the normal cause of religion. A divine intervention of God. God divinely intervening in our lives and giving us change so that we can have a new thrust in the things of God. So that we can serve God with joy and rejoicing. So that we can serve God without anyone pushing us or even without us fearing. Because some people serve God for fear. Some serve God for guilt. But we need to serve God for love. Because we love him. If you love God, if we love God, we will serve him differently. We may have come to him because of fear of hell. We may have come to him because of fear of judgment. We may have come to him because somebody painted a gleam future for us and torment in hell that may have brought us to God but we cannot serve God anymore with those things in mind. Revival ensures that we serve God because it is the right thing to do. Because we want to. Because we love him. We love him because we realize he first loved us. And he that spared not his own son. How can we serve him? Like we are being pushed and... Uh, uh, how? How can we serve him with uh, like, like we being forced like uh, I mean if we don't serve him he, the, the work of God will end. 
We need a new zeal. Amen. We need a new zeal. We need a new determination. We need to increase our love for God and serve him because he loved us. Revival is God revealing himself to man in all for holiness and irresistible power. Just here where we are reading in Habakkuk chapter number 3, scripture verse 3 says, God came from Teman and the Holy One from Mount Paran, Sila, his glory covered the heavens and the earth was full of his presence. When God comes down to his people, they are filled with praise. When the glory of God comes down, people are excited to live for God and to serve God. Hallelujah. Ask yourself this question. If you woke up one day and found you were the last man standing in this church, all the rest of us, for some strange reason, are vanished or died, would the work of God continue with you? Would it? It's the same as asking yourself this question. If everybody in the church did exactly what you do, what kind of a church would we really have? Come the time you come, serve the way you serve, sing the way you sing, pray the way you pray, give the way you give, just everything the way you do. How would you describe that church? Because that is what God sees for you, his church. Are we not the temple of the Holy Spirit? Or is that a false to believe? Is, isn't that scripture? Isn't that the word of God that we are? The temple of the Holy Spirit? Do you believe you are the temple of the Holy Spirit? Yes. And with all the way you do things, can you imagine? And yet you believe you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You are the church of the living God. God dwells in you. And yet, with all that belief, with all that, shall I call it conviction? With all that, now then you are life. Brethren, Jesus said, you shall know them. Did he say by your confession? You shall know them. By and elsewhere again it says bring forth fruit, feet or meat or suitable for repentance. Now give fruit. Your life is the fruit. Now when we observe, when, when God looks at you, we're not saying that salvation is by works, but but what we are saying is that if at all you are saved, there will be works following you. Fruit of repentance. We, if we are going to have revival, and we need revival, my dear brethren, if we are going to have revival, we must understand this. Revival 
cannot happen and then it leaves us the same way we have been. If God will revive you, if God will, 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 will come down and fill you, there will be changes in your life. Revival cannot come and leave people unchanged. Now, revival is mainly for the believers, not for sinners. Even though when revival comes, it affects both saints and sinners, but revival is for believers. To revive is to bring renewal, is to restore back to a state that was lost. You cannot revive a house that is never built, that, are, that has not been built. You cannot revive a vehicle that has never existed. If there is a vehicle that is stored somewhere, has not moved for a while, you can revive it by pumping money into it, getting a mechanic and having the mechanic work on it and you change this and you change that, you wash that, you scrub this, you do all sorts of things. You want to revive that vehicle. You want to get back, you want to get it back working. And God wants today to get some people back working. Because there are many that are no longer working. You try to do the ignition, it doesn't. It doesn't even, some of us don't even produce any sound. It's just. I want revival as a person. I want to become a better me. I remember a time. I want to go back to that time. I want to get back to that time. When God was full in me. When the word of God was alive in me. When I was only concerned about doing for God things. Do you want revival? Unless and until there is a desperation and a great hunger and thirst, it's impossible to get to that place. We've got to be tired. We've got to be tired of the way things are. We've got to be tired of the way we do things. We've got to be tired in order for God to come and imbue us with himself. In Isaiah 64, the God that we serve is a God that wants to bring changes in our lives. Who wants to bring restoration in our lives. Isaiah 64. Isaiah 64. A prayer for help. A prayer for revival. The, the New Living Translation on, on, uh, on uh, Habakkuk 3.2 3, says, come and help us again. Help us again. Help us again. Oh, that thou wouldest rent the heavens, that thou wouldest come down, that the mountains might flow down at thy presence. 
Revival is calling on God to break the heavens and come down. Revival is asking God to come near us and work among us. Rend the heavens, come down and help us. Let God's presence be with us. The God of the Old Testament was a God of revival. Saints of God in the Old Testament wanted God to come and dwell with them. That's why every year they build tabernacles expressing their desire for God to come and tabernacle and live among them. We want nothing less. We want nothing less. And the Great Commission, Scripture says, Go into all the world, into all nations, and preach the good news, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. And lo, I am with you. To the end of the age. The church must understand that. We cannot make it without God. And every individual, every saint of God. Ought to have a desire in themselves to have God dwell with them. We can call upon God to come and dwell with the church. But if the individual church doesn't go with God. Then when we come together. We will be coming with uh, candles that are off. And we have to fan one another. Fan one another. And spend a lot of time. Before we can have one candle lit. Every last one of us must ensure that their candle of God is burning. Hallelujah. Your candle of God must be burning. Your life in God must have, must have, must be burning for God. Then when we come, it's a great fire. On the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit sat upon each one of them. Tongues of fire. Tongues as of fire rested on each of them. Each. That is God in you. The individual. God in you. The Holy Ghost burning within you. We've had too many people moving on because of the crowd. And some of us are tired of pulling wagons that have no oil. Trying to pull the charge, but a lot of the people it is put oil on your wagon. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Have God burning within you so that when we say, let's go, we just move. And we can even climb a mountain together because all of us are well oiled with God. God is working in each and every last one of us. None of us is left behind. We are all moving together. Quest for revival. I say revival is the manifestation of God among the people. The 
in case you doubt the prophecy of Joel chapter number 2 in the last days God shall pour out his spirit upon all flesh upon your sons and your daughters upon your maids and uh, and uh, men servants that old prophecy is for us even today. Acts of the Apostles chapter number 2. Acts of the Apostles chapter number 2. In reference to what we're dealing here, verse 14, but Peter Standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell in Jerusalem, be it known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken as you suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken of the prophet Joel. It shall come to pass in the last days. The last days. We need to repeat that. It shall come pass in the last days. If, if in the first century Peter could quote Joel and say, In the last days, tell me what I should say about today. This must be the last. Of the very last days. Shall come to pass. In the last days. Saith God. I will pour out. My spirit upon. All flesh. That includes you. My sister. That includes you my brother. God has promised. To give you. The blessing of the Holy Spirit. The oil of God has been promised to each and every last of our wagons. So that we may serve God without those squishy noises and friction. Some of us don't own, don't, do not only have friction with one another, they have even friction with themselves. With themselves. So that even their minds is not made up what they should do. Shall I do this or shall I do that? That's friction within yourself. You need the blessing of the Holy Ghost in your life. There are some people I know that were at one time seeking the baptism in the Holy Spirit. But they have since stopped seeking. you don't know how to just say this Lord fill me with your Holy Spirit Lord fill me with your Holy Spirit and mean it and God will God will because he promised he promised to pour out his spirit Tell him, Lord, I am part of all flesh. I'm part of all flesh. You said, you promised, and I'm here, desiring of you, desiring to have you and your spirit. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And on thy servants and on thy handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy and I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. 
you have not accepted Jesus as personal savior call on him and you will be saved it's a promise it's a clear promise of god when even roberts the preacher in wells As a young man, even Roberts loved God. And they noted that he had a great desire to memorize God's word especially at night. When he grew up, he started to pastor a small church of 17 people. And in 1904 and 1905 even Roberts was responsible for a great revival that happened in Wales. And one of the time when he was preaching he felt like God had, was asking him to tell the people to do three or four things and he told the people he said number 1 do away with with every known sin do away with every known sin confess your sin repent to god he told the 17 Secondly He told the people separate yourself from any questionable behavior separate yourself from any questionable behavior If we can do some of these things my dear brethren we could be qualifying ourselves as candidates for a great revival in our lives confess every known sin repent separate yourself from every questionable behavior There are some of us that were doing so well a number of years ago. But the cares of this world. The cares of this world. And some of us because of some little blessings that god dropped to see how we would behave portions of let me tell you something god god can and desires to bless us greatly but sometimes you just drop a few blessings to see our level of maturity whether we can handle the big things some of us because of some blessings that god by his mercy dropped to us we start being cocky high minded haughty how does that as scripture say haughty high minded <laughs> we become haughty proud we start like walking on air just because of some little blessings that god has dropped by his mercy why don't we prove to god that we can be faithful with little the little that he has given to us then he can commit more to us hello 
even Roberts felt God told him be ready to obey the Holy Spirit instantly be ready have a readiness to obey the Holy Spirit instantly and finally publicly confess the Lord Jesus and on that night a wave of God came into that little crowd of 17 young men on the mountain and a revival started in that room God turned those young lives around and by morning the spirit of God had come down the valley and people just started feeling sorry for their sins and started climbing up to the little church and before long I say before long in a few short months over a hundred thousand souls had come to the Lord even the president acknowledged that there was something that was happening in the nation. Bars which used to be full lacked patrons. Why? Just because a few young men desired God in their lives. The revival that we are talking about is not a revival to change people outside there. It's a revival for God to transform our very lives. Make them new again. So that when we open our mouths the word of God flows to people. I was reading a scripture, some scriptures, a chapter I was reading, Proverbs, I don't know whether it's Proverbs 11 or, or Proverbs 14, but, I, but I, I especially I saw it had a lot to do with words from our mouths. Verse 11, verse 21, and other scriptures right there in that chapter. I don't remember what chapter it was I was reading in the morning. When we are full of God, when we allow God to influence our lives, then we will become true witnesses of God. We will speak to people the word of God. When we are called to testify or when someone wants to know our thought about a situation, we will speak not only our minds but the mind of God. And nobody will be able to resist those words. I want to ask that we stand and talk to God here today. Let's just stand. If if, 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 if we can only repent and confess every known sin. If we can separate us ourselves from questionable behavior. If we can be ready to obey the Holy Spirit instantly. And if we can be ready to make, to publicly confess our faith, to make everything right with our brothers and with God, we would be going, brethren, in the di right direction of having a revival in our very own lives. Let us pray. Let us call on God. Blessed and everlasting Father, King of the universe, Oh, how, Lord, we desire you in our lives. 
how we desire my god to have a new visitation from heaven break forth the heavens lord and come down and abide with us lord lord we are ready lord to confess every known sin to separate ourselves from every questionable behavior ready lord ready lord to obey the holy spirit instantly and ready lord ready lord to publicly confess the lord jesus help us lord help us lord help us lord help us lord visit us lord fill us lord fill us to the brim may our lives change and be transformed today may we remember lord that it is us that you want to walk through we are your servants we are those vessels that you have got to fill with yourself help us lord doesn't matter our age lord but you can fill us fill us fill the young fill the youth fill the elderly fill each one of us with your spirit and your desire in jesus name thank you lord amen god bless you God bless you.